Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Tim Schaefer. Yes. Hi. Hello, everybody. Let's talk casually while I walk over to my chair so it's not awkward. Are you having a great uh, PSX so far? How's it going? Awesome. Well, it's my honor to be here. I'm a game developer, but I'm not here to talk about uh, my games. I come out too. I'm here to talk about a game that I'm just like you, a big fan of, um, and a fan of everything this company does. So please um, join me in welcoming and give a big hand to some of my favorite dreamers from Media Molecule, uh, Siobhan Reddy, Alex Evans, and Mark Healy. Stand up. Yeah. Cool. Thanks, Hello. Hello. Welcome. Hello. Come into my couch. I just hey, everyone. bought Hello. these sofas so we could have a nice talk here. OK, fantastic. Wow. Thanks for coming, everyone. Yep, thank yeah. you. So um, I don't know if I've ever told you this. I'm a big fan of your guys' work. Oh, oh. I actually tell this, them this all the time. And my <laughs> secret plan is I want to um, erase everyone's memory so people think I made your games because they're so good. <laughs> Especially uh, Little Big Planet uh, started it for me where it's not a game just about creativity of the developers, but the creativity of everybody, the players and the whole world. Right. And um, what about people like me who are actually kind of lazy sometimes and they just want to come home and flop on the couch and play a game and not make anything? Is there anything that I can do in this new game that you're making? Uh, absolutely. Um, the the most important thing about dreams is that it's a play experience initially. When you first dive into the world of dreams, it is, you've got our content to play, of course. We've made a whole story, mm -hmm. um, which is all made using the tools. And then you can go into the community and just surf the madness that's in there, really. So mm -hmm. that's, the, that's the bit that's most exciting for me, is just... Yeah, I mean, I mean surfing the madness is, is really what it's going to be about. I think this game is just going to be over to you guys and the audience and out there on the internet. Um, everything we do is there to inspire you, so you can just enjoy it as a story, you can enjoy it as a game. Um, platforming, um, there's a point-and-click adventure side to it. What? 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 I know. That's crazy. We're really encroaching into Tim territory here. Like, yeah. Watch Will out. I be able to add RTS elements? Uh, yeah. Oh, great. Okay, yeah. And so obviously, play, create, share, that's what you guys are all about, but there's also going to be a single-player game. Right. So so these characters here that you can see behind us is oh, yeah. um, Francis, Francis and Foxy. Foxy. So, so what can you tell us about the story of this single-player game? And what kind of gameplay is it? Um, so we've actually made three stories that are intertwined and that kind of add up to one sort of super story, if you like. Um, and kind of one of the primary reasons for doing that is we wanted to kind of show the, the spread of the kinds of things that you can make in dreams. We didn't want to pigeonhole it into one kind of genre. Mm. So we've got a kind of this, this, which I would say is quite um, typical media molecule, sort of childhood fantasy. You call this? To the horror. We have like a science fiction. Would kind you of say the names? The names are of those characters. There? Francis. Oh, there's Francis and Foxy, and there's the dragon is Lancewing. 
<laughs> this cute little thing. It's so pretty. And so, so like, do you, do, do, that was all made in dreams. That was all, all made in dreams. Everything you see, everything you hear, you could do with a DS4 and a PlayStation. That's the idea. It's the same tools. Same tools. You made this with the, that players can make. No cheating. Game. It's just basically blood, sweat, and tears and a PlayStation is all you need. Um, I mean, Siobhan, like, you, are you a Foxy or a, or a Francis? <coughs> I'm Francis. Okay. Francis all the way. So Foxy has, each character has different um, abilities. So Francis has got like a kind of hammer, squeaky hammer. Mm -hmm. And um, Foxy's got like a range attack. So every, every different character, and this is Debug, Debug. who's our little sci-fi theme. He's like super cool. He's got a double jump and like a fly ability. Oh, and so you can basically, you know those old games where you hop between different characters, like Head of, head, head of Your Heels on Spectrum? Mm -hmm. That's my childhood, whatever. Uh, yeah, you just jump between different characters. You have different powers, and that allows you to progress through our story. So our story is about weaving together these different, different sub-stories, if you like. Yeah, I'm seeing like a lot of different styles. So what, um, what is tying them all together? The, is, is it one character's dream? Is it multiple dreams? So it, 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 we don't want to give away too much because that would How does it spoil end? the fun. But, <laughs> <laughs> but then, then um, the world the, explodes. The story starts with uh, this a guy called Art, which is if you've yeah, seen the trailer, train. yeah, that's right. the that's the character that I associate with most. It's the sort of <laughs> middle-aged man with a very tortured soul, and um, <laughs> essentially you're kind of playing through his journey and these kind of manifest as his dreams that he's having, and it all slowly sort of starts to make sense and. Yeah. And a weave together. And what was the process like at I mean, Molecule for creating this single player content? Because it looks like it was a collaboration of many. Is, it, is there one author of all this story, or is it? How did you bring together and, and choose these elements? So, very early on, people are just using the tool and kind of experimenting. We do a lot of game jamming, mm -hmm. and then it's just a case of taking what what's around what's on the table and kind of mixing it together and almost letting the story emerge out of it really. Mm -hmm. So it's a very sort of serendipitous way of making, that's a posh way of saying we make it up as we go along. Mm -hmm. but, um, so a lot of different people in the studio experimented yeah. with the tools and you guys do, uh, I've heard game jams are like, not assignments, but certain challenges of coming up with these game jam like ideas. Yeah, we tend to give a bit of a theme to a game jam. Mm -hmm. um, and But the way we work at the studio is this very ground up way of working. And we really want it to be a place where everybody within the studio can contribute to like the direction of the games that we're making. Mm -hmm. So I love when I look at the screen, you see things of characters or environments that, you know, some of our new artists or new programmers or people have just come and done with a new game jam. We've gone. Oh, that's really cool. Let's take that and make that the main character of the mm -hmm. of the theme. And and there's there's something about dreams, which is that if you're watching what what's playing behind us, or if you come to our booth at PSX, or you uh, see any of our streams. If you feel like intimidated, like, oh, I couldn't do a character like Foxy or I couldn't do mm. something at that level, you get to collage yeah. and piece together things from stuff that other people have made. So you don't have to kind of go super deep. You can just say, okay, I want Francis and then I want a purple elephant and then I want, like, you know. Can you grab Foxy? You, you can, can grab, you yeah. can do anything you like. Can you grab that awesome looking train and put it into yep. your yep. level? So yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Can. And you yeah. can just mash them up together. So you, or you could, like, take a, um, you know, literally completely different assets, scale them to any size you like. So you could have, like, a tiny train and then, like, <laughs> just stumps on it and it's the whole idea of dreams is it's like a dream journal or a sketchbook mm -hmm. so if you've if you've got a new idea for a new game tim you know you, you just can't explain it to your team they're just not listening to you yeah dreams <laughs> are, you, are you selling me on using dreams to yeah my, my I, I actually games? Yeah, i'm actually That's joking great. but i'm not joking i'm like do that it's, it's it'll be good the, the, the campaign isn't only single player by the way it's actually you can play it single player but it's couch Co -op as like well. a little big planet, like yeah, yeah but uh, two, a two player, one or two player. That's with, great. But that's and that's not a limitation of the tool. That's just what we decided to do for our content. So uh, you've been making this game. So when did you start making this game? And can you tell me about the idea? I wrote a joke that obviously came to you in a dream, but I don't want to tell that joke now. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was a it's a natural progression from mm -hmm. Little Big Planet for us. Really, mm -hmm. we knew we wanted to take that idea of um, play, create, share, and just evolve it in mm -hmm. each of those areas. Mm. So and is, this, is it similar now to the original idea that you had for the game, or is it...? It's surprisingly, it's actually surpassed our ambitions, I think, yeah. which is quite <laughs> rare in making computer mm -hmm. games. But, um, you know, it's been a lot of hard work, but we've 
And what does it mean like I putting it in front of people? Like you have play testers or do you do, do you do a lot of internal testing and do you bring in strangers and we have there are some strangers. Um, we're having a small like alpha scale test and there's gonna be a beta we have been promising for a long time and it's coming. I promise, really it is. Um, twenty eighteen. But what's interesting is like even the people at Media Molecule, they kick back at home and they build completely different content and we're gonna be showing you something kind of world premiere in a moment of <laughs> I love this I love this level. <laughs> World premiere. <laughs> <laughs> this is Tim, Jeff, uh, Schaefer. Um, and I'm sure they'll replace that with something really fancy when it actually goes out. <laughs> Some remember. graphics going around. Um, but yeah, so, the, so when the team and the people who currently have dreams and the strangers who get to play test it for us, um, they make very different content from what we make. So our story is one thing, and our three stories are, are kind of three things. Um, but the things that our, our team and then hopefully you guys and girls will make are very, very different. They're out there. So you've got this kind of like safe play experience. If you want to just play our story, that's cool. Mm -hmm. But then if you want to like, we have this feature called Auto Surf, which is I think Mark's favorite Well, thing this would go game. back to yeah. your original question, I think, if you're like, come back from a hard day of mm -hmm. making, making games. Mm -hmm. If you're super lazy and you can't even be bothered to type in or search, you just hit auto surf. <laughs> You've essentially got like an auto-generated playlist of just random content really? that you mm -hmm. can just surf and through. Just fill the whole world with maybe it's a train, maybe it's... Yeah, you have no idea. Yeah, we, it, it like weaves together stories in the same way that our story mode is, is three hmm. interwoven stories. What it does is it picks three community-made stories, which might have a progression, so you might make a one-hour oh. game, and then oh. takes three of them, chops them up, and then like uh, dices them together. So you will I get couldn't wait to see what this was a gesture for. Yeah, <laughs> twisting. It's like rope making or something. I don't know. And uh, <laughs> what's going on? It's just it's just a really nice um, serendipitous way of discovering content. Essentially, yeah, yeah. that's really nice. Really fun. Yeah. And then, so that I was going to ask, yeah, how do you make sure people? How do you find stuff? Because there's going to be so many. I imagine so many worlds that people create and find the stuff that is is the most interesting to you. And is it random or is it are you guys going to have a similar like community? You guys are so great with community management and, and mm -hmm. user created content. Yeah, I mean, um, we learned a lot with Little Big Planet, so we're sort of taking what we learned back in 2008. Yeah. We sort of always joke that MySpace was our reference at that point, and we're now 2017. What's MySpace? I'm, I know. So, <laughs> My so, I'm so young, but I like, don't know was, what that was, is. It was awesome in its day. But uh, you know, now we're in the world of like things like Pinterest, which we've learned a lot about. And within the project, within Dreams, we have this idea of personas, and curators are a really big part of that. And so we're really excited about the idea of like people making collections and playlists, and sort of so we have that social layer which we we didn't which wasn't sort of part of like the LBP sort of right so if you if you if you have great taste in games maybe you're really into like horror genre or something mm. so you spend your time searching for the coolest new horror levels or the, the coolest kind of scary experiences mm. whatever floats your boat but you get known as a curator of horror so you publish playlists mm. maps we call them so you publish maps of like the greatest horror levels that you found you didn't have to make those levels you just have to like have That's the right. taste oh. to find them yeah. and piece them together mm -hmm. and then people will follow you in a kind of social media yeah. buzzword test thing. Nope. Yeah, and then, then, yeah, you'll be the Tim Schafer. People will follow you because you have a certain taste in dreams, hopefully, that's good or absolute <laughs> rubbish. In dreams. There we go. <laughs> and uh, and, we'll, and be, um, we'll be plucking out things ourselves as well that we kind of notice and sort of highlighting them and, you know, pimping them. Essentially. Do you want to uh, pluck out one right now? I do. Uh, this is, this, I have to show you this dream. So this, I will tell you a little backstory. This is an example of a dream which is not a Media Molecule dream. This is Ed, who's out on the show floor demoing the game today. So you should go and like, give Ed crazy love. And he made this last weekend when he was sick. Uh, and one day he wanted to make a track. Just um, He's a musician, not a level designer. But as, because Dreams, what it does is it, you can make music, voiceover, sound effects, um, all of this stuff, super deep. There's a modular synth, if anyone out there is into uh, uh, synths. Um, so he was just making a track. I'm like, oh, I'm going to make some music. But then, because it's Dreams, he's like, oh, I'm just going to turn it into a music video. Oh, well, now I'll make it so it's a playable music video, and you have to play through the level in order to get the, you know, the, the track to evolve. Um, so we're going to show this for the first time. And it's a bit cheeky of me, because Ed just as I say, made this in his downtime. Fever dreams. It's fever dreams. Fever dreams. It's got a kind of daft punky vibe. It's like an interactive music video. And for me, this is a taste of what you, the collective universe, will hopefully do. We'll be doing our thing, and then you'll be doing interactive daft punk crazy. Who knows what you'll be doing? And daft punk, if you want us to do an album with you, you know, you can just give us a call. <laughs> yeah, daft punk is out here. Yeah. You would never know, because you don't know what they look like. No, I don't. Yeah. yeah. 
helmet people. All right. So yeah, um, Kevin, roll push the, the roll push the, the eyeball button. Roll the eyeball. Poke the eyeball. Roll. Ed's eyeball. Ed's eyeball. It's totally. So you you were saying that I, I thought you meant he made a track in some other program and then ported it into the game. But he made that music track in Dreams? He made that track in Dreams. All the mixing, all the production, all the synths. Right. Everything is made in Dreams. Synth, um, played live in the game as well. So if you want to make gameplay that manipulates the music or music which manipulates the gameplay, you can do both of those things. If you want to do voiceover, um, you can do all of that. So What I love about that is like by day, Ed is making these like gorgeous tracks for like the childhood theme and for the action theme and these beautiful things, and then he goes home and he just creates like utter madness. It's yeah, he'll spend a day on like his footstep. Like every, yeah. everyone who's a professional game developer knows, you know, you've got to do the like perfect crunch sound when the footstep lands, and then he goes home and goes, oh, I'm just going to do this. So. I got an eyeball thing I got to get off. Yeah. 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 yeah, exactly. That's awesome. And that just was one played. sick day. That was one sick day. Yeah, it was yeah, one sick day. Now. And he, he didn't know that was going to get shown, so sorry, Ed. Oh, but, like, geez. Um, yeah. <laughs> Don't tell Ed if you see him out there. <laughs> 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 that is crazy. So, um, I was going to ask, when you uh, make a game like this and you share it with people and you watch people create and you test it, do you find yourselves learning things about the nature of creativity itself? Like <laughs> being surprised by like, how people make stuff? Yeah. And what, like, what have you learned about how people make stuff and what helps them and what inspires them? Um, <clears throat> in my personal experience, I've sort of come across two extremes. You've kind of got someone that will have an idea and kind of want to pre-plan what it is they're going to make mm -hmm. down to the sort of exact colour of a fingernail and then go and make it and then you've got the other extreme which is a bit more like me where you don't really know what you want to make so you just start making anything and see what happens and just mm -hmm. let accidents happen and sort of see where that steers you mm -hmm. and um, I think Dreams caters for, for that complete range mm -hmm. you don't have to go into a level knowing what you're going to make you can just start just doodling and sketching, essentially. Yeah. I mean, that's what the video here is showing, is really just sort of the power of just sort of picking up these elements and just sort of sketching out a rough level, like really sort of slapdash, sort of sketching it out. It's really, really simple. Mm -hmm. Like, and Kareem isn't here. Like, uh, uh, he's the art director, and he has this thing that 
we want dreams to feel really loose, really like a sketchbook. If you've got an idea and you want to get it out, I was saying to Tim before you should use this in, in your production double fine, but absolutely, I meant it because you don't have to be very kind of precise. You can be, and as Mark's saying, there are certain people whose creative process involves tuning every single last thing. But there aren't enough tools, I think, that just celebrate just doodling, like mucking around. Like you don't have to have a plan. You can just enjoy it. And one thing that we learned, you know, back from making other games, we're game makers as well. It's a game. It's a PlayStation experience. You can relax. You don't have to publish this for anyone. This isn't mm. need to be for somebody else. You can just enjoy the process of making. This like. thing, I think it's just, it's like there's all different types of play and creating stuff is a type of play. Like mm. Lego is a type of play. Yeah. And one of the things that I've loved about using the tools is like, because you can move between making music and doing a bit of logic and sketching out a level, there's almost a never ending list of like, oh, I just want to do this. And just one more go, There's one more thing yeah. over here. And, and sometimes if you get stuck, you're like, oh, I don't really know how to do that. I find it's amazing that I can just go, all right, it's okay, I'm just gonna great. I'm just gonna play with the lighting for five minutes. And whilst I'm playing with the lighting, you know, a light bulb will go off and I'll be like, ah, oh, that's how I do that thing over there. And the, you know, the, the fact that the tools are all there and you're moving between these different things, it's like tickling your brain. And it's mm -hmm. just, it's a really, it's just a really, really fun way of spending like an entire, Set of hours. Yeah, and the, I mean, another big factor in the sort of creative process, I think, is collaborating with other people, mm -hmm. obviously, mm -hmm. and yep. you know, bouncing ideas off people, criticising mm -hmm. each other, <laughs> getting annoyed, that kind of thing. But um, that that's really catered for a lot in this as well. You can really collaborate. Right. So in Little Big Planet, if you guys played Little Big Planet, that you one person, one level. So in Dreams, you don't have to make levels. You could just be the person who makes music, or you could make like bow ties, or you could make mm. you know fingernails, whatever it is you want to make. Eyeballs, eyeball person. You're the eyeball I can model person. an eyeball. There you go. Yeah, and and then on a single Dream, you can also have collaborators. So I could say like, okay, I'm going to let Tim, Mark, and Siobhan into my level, and everyone else gets to play it. But you guys actually get to edit it and work together and like um, jam together basically mm -hmm. so it's, it's all about collaboration um, as well so we, we do that internally to build our story so the story that you play is exactly that you have everyone in the studios marked as a collaborator on all of our levels um, but you could have teams you could have like clans or teams or whatever you have out there in your in the, in the gaming communities and you could be working together on, on your magnum opus together so that's fun yeah. and we actually when you are using dreams we we, we have like experience points that you amass mm -hmm. and we track the kinds of things that you do so you kind of can accrue these personas. You might be known as an artist or an animator mm. based on the things that you've been doing. So if you do or a want player. Play. Or a player, obviously. Great I mean, term. Um, and the point is, if you feel like you want to collaborate on some new idea, you can actually s search for the people that are a lot experienced in making music oh, wow. or animating or things like that. So, so that if you're making a super hard game, yeah. you would then search for like the best players in the community and invite them to come and play test your level. So that this idea of a persona is super cool because you can be like, or you can reach out to the best curators of a particular genre and you're like, okay, Tim, can you pimp my level? Put it in your map of like best point and click adventures, yeah. whatever it is you want to. I mean, it sounds crazy. It sounds like you could actually end up with people starting game companies out of the dreams community, like bringing <laughs> people good. to those different. Well, you know, we could, when with Little Big Planet, I mean, a lot of our team are actually ex LBP community members, and so really? Debug and Francis are both characters made by St Steve Big Guns, who was an LBP community member mm. and he's now part of the team making like super cool characters. Watch like five years from now we'll be at PSX and someone will be up here and they'll be like, how'd your company get started? It's like, well, we were playing Dreams. <laughs> <laughs> that, awesome. I mean, that's, that is, that's something that's quite central to, certainly for me anyway, that's really close to my heart is, is enabling that kind of thing mm -hmm. for people that maybe don't know the right people or whatever had to get into this into this, you know, this wonderful world that we're all lucky to mm -hmm. be working in. Well, they might not know they like it, or they might not know they're good at it, and yeah. then they just yeah, try exactly. this when they're playing the game. Right. So that was such a good point about um, the boundaries between playing and creating that seem like they're there because often a game will, you have to switch from play this level to make this level. Right. And it, you, you get used to thinking there's a difference between creating and playing, but then when you have a child, or you, it's, so much, it's so much more natural with, with kids to just be like, yeah, playtime is creative time. Right, right. And it's just a flow that goes back and forth. And when you're even playing like a, a make-believe, you're creating stories. And right. We have this like saying internally, which is that the animation, which you're actually seeing a little bit of behind us right now, um, we capture performances, so the idea is that you don't have to do keyframes and complicated curves. I mean, actually, you can do that if you're really deep, but the, the, the way into animation is that you just hit record and then just use 
move stuff. So right now, uh, let's just talk through what's going on on the screen behind us. Um, he's placing down, or she's placing down, um, some action recorders and just moving this stuff. So that little golden glow is like a track of them moving, puppeting the... Right, right, exactly. Yeah, that's that's just showing you the path that you've literally just moved. Right. And so another thing is that a lot of these mechanics you learn by playing the game. Like you were saying, Tim, it's like play and create are actually really merged together. So another fun thing you can do is you can actually have that record button down while you possess <coughs> a character. So you can actually record like little movies or little stories um, with your voice, with a microphone, with a headset, and you can just perform using the, the DualShock the same way you would in a game, mm. but it's recording you, so you can do little stories. It's like Henson, we call it like Henson, not Pixar. It's like <laughs> when kids pick up the, the sock puppet and they're like, yeah. rawr, 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 and then rawr, 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 rawr. that's really cool. Like yeah. in 30 seconds, you've made a story and make so You can play work. like your own cutscene one actor at a time and exactly. record yeah. them all. And go back, rewind, and then like, play the next character, and play the next character, and play the next character, oh, and build it up. Yeah. I saw that a little bit in the uh, single player uh, trailer. I could, you could see, I was like, how are they moving that character? Because it, it had a kind of a puppeted look. Some of them had right. a puppeted look that looked like they're. Yeah, very much. Yeah, the, 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 that key word, performance, that was one of our sort of um, sort of basic philosophy behind the create tools. Wherever possible, we want to better capture a performance so that people can actually get get that kind of human expression into things. The gyros are great for that as well. It's like the cheapest, um, most effective uh, motion capture in the world. You could, and, and Steve Big Guns, who's a community member that we mentioned that we hired, he's a super expert at building like new powers. So if you look at Francis, she has this like hammer move and like these, these special moves where she does like spin mm -hmm. jumps and stuff. And if you place her in your level, you get all of those powers, but there's nothing about her which is hard coded into the engine. Like Steve built her out of around, I think it's four or 5,000 individual logic gadget elements inside the game. So there's nothing about Francis which is preordained. Like you guys and girls can do different characters, different powers. It's very hard to explain until people get their hands on it. They're like, wow, and you can open Francis up and find out how he did that animation of that spin jump and how he connected it to the particular button press, double jumps, you can change the timings. Um, there's, there's, so there's this like deep side to it. And then there's this playful side of just like, I want a character that is 500 foot tall and that just can stomp through my level. Mm -hmm. You can the do cool that. The thing is you can start at either end of that. And I like that like, sometimes with dreams, you'll pick it up and be doing the thing of like playing with a kid and like, oh, what should we do? And then the serendipity of that is like, oh, actually that's a really cool, I've made a great scene. I now want to turn that into a story that I'm going to publish. Like, I remember in the early days, the discussion would be like trying to find like happy accidents. Right. And that like in music, jamming, it's much more normal to make mistakes and those mistakes to end up becoming what the whole thing is about. Yeah, exactly. And in game jams, that's not always, because everyone's always in different places and different, using different machines. You don't have that same, different programs. And with Dreams, what I love is like the idea of jamming together has a whole, it's a different thing because you're all in the same tool. You can see each other's mistakes. You can see yeah, absolutely. And, and, and they build them. off them. And laugh at each other. A lot of them are really funny and it's like, you know, it's great to laugh and it's great to laugh in games and I love that so much within dreams the it's stuff silly. that people are making at home is it's just really funny and that's mm. that's a, it's a cool I mean the the juxtapositions as well like there was one person I remember this is a couple of years ago now and he was making a, a little pastoral scene and he needed a path like he needed a nice little gravel path winding path he just got a massive pink flying V electric guitar <laughs> and scaled it up and turned the fretboard into the like yeah. path mm -hmm. and those like stupid um, uh, sort of mashups if you like uh, 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 what is the lifeblood of it and you don't see that in, in other tools. So for example, in Little Big Planet, even, um, everyone gets the same gnome, everyone gets the same matchbox, everyone gets the same um, spoon. It's one of my favorite assets in LVP. Um, but like, those were made by us for you, which is cool, but mm -hmm. it's a limited Lego set. Like, LVP is this awesome Lego set, but the pieces were like pre-fabricated mm -hmm. by Media Molecule. In Dreams, the set of Lego pieces is completely unending because you can go in and sculpt something from scratch and then publish it and be like okay i have just created a completely new octopus you know i'm into blue planet right now i'm so i love that show and i i have a feeling that if this game was out right now there'd be cuttlefishes and coral and all sorts of crazy stuff because everyone who was watching that show would get inspired and then you could then use you could benefit from that or like if if your you know gang beast comes out on ps4 gang beast coming on ps4 um you see, get ten pounds. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, yeah, no. So people will get inspired by what they're seeing around them in, in the culture. Like, 
not to get too like highbrow about it, but like if they see something that inspires them in the broader like universe, mm -hmm. they can like channel that into dreams and then do this like dreamy, fluffy reinterpretation of like, yeah, I just want cuttlefish everywhere in my dream. That's basically my goal. Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> make octopuses I, for me, please. I made an octopus. Did you? I saw it. For my octopus. I have fine, fine, so fine octopus. Of my octopus. There we go. <laughs> I don't know if you would really like it, but. Do you when you uh, when you put the game in front of people? Um, did you ever see, like some people like me, I get very intimidated by like the blank piece of paper when I'm writing and I just don't, like if you could draw anything, what do you draw? It's so, it's so like, did you see people having that trouble and, and how did you get around that? Yeah. Uh, so we have some tutorials mm -hmm. um, and the way the tutorials work is they're essentially these kind of half finished dreams mm -hmm. that you can um, go in and just and finish and that, that's a really nice way to start creating as well. When you go into create mode, you can start with a, a blank canvas but you can just browse and remix other people's things. Mm -hmm. So like a starting template if you like. So that's a really nice way to, to kind of get... I've got on. actually a funny story. So we've been doing, you mentioned testing, so we've been user yeah. testing as we call it, i.e. getting people off the street to come and play mm -hmm. dreams and they play these ready to be finished dreams and the first one is an aquarium. You get this like pre-made aquarium and the only thing you have to do is put some fish in it. That's the only, <laughs> that's your goal, right? It's really funny, you play it, it's not like a tutorial with a, with a kind of whip, you know, it's like actually quite fun, like just make some fish. Make something okay. So here's the thing, we ran two user tests and the first set was people who played Little Big Planet. they played Minecraft, they were into building games, mm -hmm. they, they played our kind of, our genre before. Those guys, they all finished it and it was cool and we were very excited. And then we did another test that was people who didn't have any interest they in playing. They didn't identify, they as, didn't like identify as builder people. They were just gamers. They were like, I don't care about creativity. I'm not interested, but I'm going to make this aquarium because I'm here. And they did a way better job than I have no science to back understand why this is. But like, I'm really interested by people who don't think of themselves as creators, what they do, the aquariums they make. Good. and the What did they make? Now I want to know. Did well, there's one guy. Just, yeah, they were just wild. Like, they went... Yeah. My favorite was the, was the over the shoulder. It's yeah. kind of like, um, I don't know, like a... First third, person. Yeah, Video. it was third person. It was like over the shoulder Shooter. fish cam. And mm -hmm. he, he had like the camera following the fish around the aquarium. And everyone else just did this like simple thing that they were told to do. But that guy just went, went really deep and it was sort of like, I don't know, like yeah, Gears of War almost. There's, there's like embedded camera kind of, it's a fish. Mm -hmm. there's, there's another thing that we do as well. Um, we have these weekly community challenges. Mm -hmm. So every week we'll just throw out a kind of theme and say, make something that's inspired by Tim Schafer's shoes, Fish. for example. Oh gosh. Don't look. Um, and just having that as a keyword, mm -hmm. you, can just, you can just go off and not be precious and just make your thing, submit it, and then the community can vote on who's the best thing this week. Yeah. We've been we're doing that internally at the moment, just with the team. And everyone gets involved and it's, 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 it's hilarious. Really. Yeah, and then that deals with the blank canvas really, really well because you don't have one. You've got like a theme mm -hmm. to sort of work within. And I think it's been really interesting within the studio seeing people who are not making content every day. It's been a real icebreaker for them of just like, let me have a have something to start with. Did you want to talk a bit about Well, I was going to say in the background here, we've actually got the video playing, um, which is showing some of the like, layers of the audio so basically if you want to you can just search for music and there'll be musicians in the community who make great tunes great pieces of music and you can just place them in your level but but then the next layer down is we get this whole like timeline system so if you've ever used a package like like GarageBand or um, Pro Tools or anything like that um, that's what you get in dreams right there in the in the game um, so here they are collaging pieces of pre-made instruments together and the next sort of rung down the rabbit hole if that's not enough for you is that you can actually go in and perform. And again, Mark was talking about performance. We have these instruments, virtual instruments, which you can also you know. make. <laughs> so yeah, we can make the kalimba, we can make the rubber band, kind of, I don't know what instrument mm -hmm. we can make. We'll have a library of a few hundred that theremin. you guys get. Theremin, theremin. theremin. definitely theremins. Um, controller theremin. Yeah, are you, are you good at theremin? I'm one of the top ranked theremin but, players in yeah, the country. In the world. So well known. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, New York Phil. I learned something new about you all the time too. There yeah. we go, spoons, yeah. I can play the spoons. I try and keep it. Great. So yeah, so you get to go and do that. You can build instruments. We already have a library of instruments that we've made. We also have a second screen. So if you have a phone or an iPad or, or a laptop, you can import audio into that laptop. Uh, you can take samples, high quality samples. You can use a podcasting mic. So if you're a podcaster, you have a good quality mic. You can just record yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, whether you're into VO. Talking to your phone. And you're talking to the phone and you push a button and it sends it to the PS4. 
Uh, or if you have a headset, you can do that directly on the PS4. If you have a camera, PSI camera, you can do that. So we have all these ways in. And as I say, like we, it's really hard to kind of convince people that we're not lying, that all of our story mode is made in the game. And that extends to the designers, the animators, the, the musicians. So you know, when they are making the really? foley... All the music is made. All the music all the is made in the game. So the foley of like, you know, when I was talking about Ed having to make crunch sounds, he really had to make crunch sounds. He, he, he put them in the game, and then every sound you can then manipulate, we have reeling off, I, I, I can't even remember what they are, but there's like five band EQ, compression, distortion, wave shaping, modular synth, LFOs, envelopes, say these words, you know, Google them. And you don't need to do any of that. That's the beauty of it. You can ignore all of that stuff and just go, oh, it sounds nice. Or you can be the person who wants to learn about music production and then it's like, I'm going to go and you know, change the cue on this EQ band and you can actually do that. Or I think one of the stories that I like about that would be you don't know what you like, you start messing around, you right. go through the layers of the you get lost. A bit, you get lost, your sort of curator points come up and say to you, you're an audio artist. Yeah. And like for the, you get this sort of recognition. Endorphin like, rush. You're like, oh, right, yeah, no, that's what I've been doing. I've loved doing that. And so your name, like you can, you get credit for your thing if it's shared somewhere else and can people then just pass that from level to level and it can yeah. get pulled out of someone's yeah, level. We, and we sort of track the genealogy. So if somebody makes a level by um, collaging other people's objects, for mm. example, your name, if you made a particular object, your name stays attached to that, even if it gets re remixed a thousand times. Right, so we track credit. Trace basically. back the kind of history. Oh, yeah, you can, in some mode, see that person and just go to their... Right, exactly. Yeah. So, so you might make um, a balloon. Like, you're just messing around with your kid, and you're like, I'm going to make a, a, a party balloon. Like, take me two seconds to sculpt it. And then it gets used in some massive level by some super famous creator. And you get that kind of... Some of the kudos of that famous level comes to you, because you made that balloon, and that's part of, you know, you're part of the success at that level. Mm. So we really want to promote a community that work together, jam together, remix together, it's, and which is part of games culture now. Like The whole idea of global game jams, the whole idea of, of, of people working together is, is what Dreams is about. Um, and Twitch streamers as well. Like It's fun to watch. I, I don't know if you guys have been watching the create in the background, but it's, it's kind of relaxing. It's like um, Bob Ross kind of thing. You can mm -hmm. just enjoy the... A lot of happy accidents. There we go. It is happy, all about happy that. Happy little trees. Um, mm. and yeah, happy that's, little space that's, doors. <laughs> Cyber doors. But has anyone ever made anything in Dreams that you didn't realize they could make? Yeah, my, one of my favorites is the... Um, QA? Like, oh, my the QA. QA. We have an Q, amazing QA team, and they do bizarre stuff. So one guy was testing the audio. You can tell him obsessed by audio. He said he'd made a synth, and I was like, there's already a synth in the game. What are you talking about? He actually modeled out of wood a beautiful old 70s synthesizer with knobs and dials. And I was like, that's very nice, pretty sculpting you've done there. And then I realized it actually worked. And with the imp, you could like play, push the keys, or you could roll a rock over the keys of these 70s thing. And it, would, it was a really good like, <laughs> Moog synthesizer with all of the like knobs worked, so you could like resonance stuff. And I was like, his interpretation of music wasn't as geeky as mine. His was like, I want a physical thing that I can play. And then he made a saxophone. It looked like a saxophone, and you could play it. And I was like, this is bizarre. And then one of our web designers recently did this really hard as nails space docking thing. I don't know whether it's like, I can't describe it. Kerbal Space Program meets Tarkovsky crazy Russian. Anyway, you have to dock a little space module into a, a spaceship. And this guy's a web developer. He's like never done graphics or art or um, game design officially anyway. And he did the sound design. It's really terrifying. And then the sun rises over the planet. And you're just like, I had no idea that you could do a space game that was this beautiful. <gasps> Did she just kill the eyeball? <laughs> she took the eyeball out, Ed. That, that wasn't the eyeball, was it? Oh, I couldn't no, really no, care about that eyeball the, the meanies, the, I think one of the key point is, if you really want to delve deep into it, it's, it's a massively powerful, flexible content creation tool that mm -hmm. can compete with lots of other content creation tools out there. Mm -hmm. But the way into it is playing. very simple. This is what I'm going to do when the game comes out, and, I, and I'm really hoping that you guys will have a similar experience. You, you boot Dreams up, and then you just play Dream surf, auto surf across the, the, the mad stuff that we'll have got made. And it will be like sort of infinite David Lynch, sort of, I hope, sort of <laughs> surreal experience after surreal experience. And you don't know what you're going to get. There'll be some great games in there, and there'll be some crazy stuff. There'll be some like, like take it or leave it. But it doesn't matter because Dreams is all about that mashup, that, that craziness. 
I, I'm getting that impression. Yeah. 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 Infinite David Lynch would have been a good. There we go. For that. Yeah. Tagline. Some problems In, with that, but. Inf- yeah. <laughs> well, um, we're getting to near the end. You can ask some f- final questions. I would like to know what kind of impact do you, do you hope Dreams has on individuals or maybe the games industry or just the world in general? I, well, I certainly hope it's the start of many people's careers, really. Mm-hmm. If they've ever dreamed of kind of doing, making films or making games, this is perfect. Telling stories. All they need is an idea and a yeah. PlayStation 4, and they can start sketching out their ideas. You know, that's the. And certainly with Little Big Planet, like Siobhan was saying, we ended up hiring lots of people from the community. And there were marriage proposals. We played a marriage proposal level with, uh, with <laughs> you once in Little Big Planet. Wait, did we get married? Oh. What happened? Tim, that, I'm sorry to say. <laughs> the, um, yeah, no, we. we People's someone proposed to someone changed. for real in the game. Yeah, yeah exactly. And, and then education as well. Like I mentioned Twitch streaming. And Kareem, who's our art director, is so excited to teach people about composition, architecture. There's a, there's a whole other side of this, which is like um, really a wonderful way to uh, um, kind of educate people about art, storytelling, mm-hmm. game design. I think that was the thing we discovered with LBP. Was we, there was a point where it was like we found out um, physics teachers were using it to teach physics to kids. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that was great was that they were learning physics, but they were also learning composition and all of these game different design things and, yeah. game design. Yeah. But I feel like one of the things that I'm really excited about is the longer the games industry is around, the more the sort of the genres become sort of almost less defined. With, mm. with, and I feel like this, the, the fact that the tool allows you to move between sound and animation and logic uh, um, and art will mean that people will just create brand new things. The the limit of like what is digital interactivity is like we're really going to give people an ability to just redefine what that is. I can see Shu sitting in the audience over there which reminds me about the virtual reality aspect. (laughs) So we're going to support virtual reality not from day one but hopefully day two. Oh yeah. And um, I think the idea of giving these tools to the PlayStation community so they can make virtual reality games is really exciting because you're just going to have a real exploration of a... a, a If if any of you out there have tried VR and you have that moment of, I think they call it presence when you're in the space, imagine if the feeling where you also made that space. So it's one thing to be like, wow, I'm in this amazing place that someone else made for me and it's super cool, but it's a whole other level if you can be standing there and I'm like, this alleyway in a street scene, whatever, I built it. And I built it in VR, perhaps. You know, I I assembled those neon lights and I I put in the the little bar and then I looked the the little radio playing in the corner and there's something really amazing about standing somewhere and feeling like you've just made the world around you. Mm -hmm. It's like... Mm -hmm. It's that, it's that aspect, though, of, you know, you're going to have a whole community of people exploring what is possible with yeah. this device, which is we've only just we don't started know. really dealt yeah. with. We basically don't know anything. So mm-hmm. when the game comes out, I hope you will show us what's possible, because I, I actually don't know what people will do with it, which is kind of... That's pretty exciting. It is very exciting. That's pretty awesome. That's cool. Is there any nuts and bolts information people need to know about the game, now that we've talked about all the <coughs> well, philosophical elements of it? It's coming out next year, oh. which for us is... Awesome. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, and then we'll be doing a beta before it launches, but we haven't we haven't quite got announcement dates. You yet. Some, some people have asked on Twitter if you need move controllers or if you need VR. Those things are supported, but you do not need them. You can do 100% of Dreams just with a PlayStation 4 and a DualShock. You don't need any additional hardware, but we do support those things. So if you want to do the like deluxe super edition, get yourself two moves. Event, you know, it, uh, VR won't be day one, but day two, get yourself a PSVR, and um, we'll support those things. But um, yeah, it's it's for you guys. All you need is a PS4. And That's it, great. It's cool. That's awesome. Thank you, Tim. Well, thanks for being here, you guys, Thank and you. thanks for coming, everybody. Let's Thank have more big hand for Alex, Siobhan, yeah. and Mark. Yeah. All right. Thank you. PlayStation.